Hi, I'm in Corfu today, well for a week, um, halfway through it actually. Uh, I, I love Corfu, it's ever since I was a kid when I read the Gerald Doyle books, long before I ever got a chance to come here. Um, I just, just, it seemed like a magical place and I so desperately wanted to be him. Um, for those of you that haven't read his books, I um, highly recommend them. Many of them are described as exotic adventures around the world in search of animals for zoos. This is uh, expeditions in the 1950s when such things were acceptable. But actually the books I really loved were the ones about his childhood where he spent several years growing up on Corfu. And it just sounded so idyllic. He, he, uh, he had a pet donkey and he, went, he was really into nature. And uh, he went on collecting expeditions with, with his donkey, with jam jars around its neck and he caught all sorts of lizards and snakes and terrapins and, and praying mantises and, and you name it. Um, had a pet owl and it just sounded brilliant so I really, really wished I, my childhood was more like that. But not that I have anything to complain about. Anyway, um, Corfu is still, I mean, the, his books were written in the 19, well, about his childhood in the 1940s I think. Uh, but it's it's really unspoiled. It's a beautiful island. I don't think it kind of really changed that much. There's not much farming. It's very low key, very low intensity. There's miles of mountains and forests and hardly any people. Uh, and it's so full of flowers and, and insects and nature. So I've been trying to film things for the last few days and I'll carry on for the next few days. And I just thought you might be interested to see some of the beasties to be found here. So let's have a look at what I found. This is the lagoon just next to our hotel. You can see the, the lovely green mountains behind, it's very lush. Uh, this is a fantastic beastie. I've only seen these twice in my life. Look at it, an owl flies. It's a bit like a dragonfly to look at, but it's related to a lacewing. Fantastic. There it goes. This is wild carrot. Just absolutely humming with life. I have no idea why snails would want to cluster like this. There's just countless trillions of them here, all over the, the sand dune plants. Carpenter bee. Uh, these are solitary bees, but huge beasties, big as a big bumblebee. Very handsome, slightly intimidating. They have that lovely kind of black, oily shine. Called carpenter bees because they burrow into timber to make their nests. first saw this that it was a female stag beetle but I don't think it is it's a scarab beetle of some sort I'm just wandering along a path near the coast it's a bit confused clearly trying to dig into the ground I didn't like being out in the open I It's just an ant carrying a dead beetle back to its nest, rather frantically. This is a different ant nest, not the same species, but uh, very active. And here we have a pair of dung beetles rolling their ball of dung uh, they are going to bury that and lay an egg in it, and their offspring will eat it. Tasty. Seems a little bit uncoordinated. Another carpenter bee, of course. A bit of pollen on his legs. Where's she gone? There we go.
This is a relative of the brimstone that's very common uh, in the UK called the Cleopatra. It has this fantastic orange uh, splash on the upper side of the wings of the male. There's three of them here, I think, courting and fighting, flirting with each other. Beautiful. This, I, I've never seen one of these in my life, but I know it's called the ladybird spider, um, for obvious reasons. Absolute beauty, just wandering across the sand dunes. So this is its defensive posture, it's trying to frighten me off. But no, no, it's running for it. What a handsome creature. Look at this beast, this is a type of bush cricket. Amazing long antennae, probably quite hard for you to see. Very handsome insect. This is an interesting contrast actually. So that crickets and grasshoppers are related and one of the ways you tell them apart is that grasshoppers have uh, short stubby antennae. This is, is a big grasshopper, um, uh, a locust essentially there, one and the same thing. Uh, I think it's lost a leg, one of its back legs, so it's not uh, jumping away. Little stripey eyes. I've no idea why a big wasp would be interested in a pile of dung. Wasps are predators, but it seems to be chewing on the dung itself. Don't understand that. Another cricket, a bush cricket. This is a female. Uh, you see that curved ovipositor. These have got it as well. There's three, three bush crickets here in a row, each with that curved egg-laying uh, device at the back of the abdomen. Buff-tailed bumblebee, familiar-looking species, common in the UK, found all over Europe. Sure, what's attracting all these fish? These are called flower beetles. They're another type of scarab beetle, lazily munching on pollen. And here, like, four hair streak butterflies on one little patch of flowers. Going further inland, that's the previous stuff was on the coast. When you go up into the mountains, it's much greener and there are way more flowers and a lot more bee activity too. Absolutely gorgeous. It's miles and miles of beautiful flowers. So this patch of some kind of mint family plant um, is just humming, mainly, mainly with honeybees, there's a few bumbles in there, and who knows what else. If I shut up for a second, just listen. Hopefully you could hear that. Ooh, look, this is some kind of fritillary butterfly. Don't immediately know which one. All of them very scarce in the UK. This one seems rather tame. Beautiful. Find this wandering around in a cafe on the sea for me. It's a, it's a first in style, tiny baby mantis. And it's going to be quite an impressive insect. It's a bit of a second to just have a look. I don't know where they watch you, they can tell you they're having a few questions. And this is the 
Some mating chafers. Another, some more, some yet more scarab beetles actually. I was watching this carpenter bee. Suddenly spotted something else. Look here. This is a paper wasp nest. This is a species of social wasp that lives in small groups, just a few wasps uh, nest together. There only appears to be one wasp on this nest at the moment. Uh, it's a beetle, but I'm afraid I don't know what that is. If anyone would like to tell me, it should be easy to identify. What a beauty. This is some kind of longhorn beetle, Cerambicidae. Add this, look, wow. What a gorgeous butterfly, the scarce swallowtail. Doesn't occur in England. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is a monstrous wasp, the biggest wasp I've ever seen in Europe. It's a scolid. Um, uh, they're parasitoids. I think they lay their eggs on hawk moth caterpillars. What a monster. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Some pretty cool beasties here. And I have to say, it's just been a real relief to be somewhere where there's lots of insects, where there's lots of life, loads of flowers and different creatures to see. And I really noticed the swallows and the swifts and the house martins are so common here. I barely see them back home anymore. Anyway, I don't want to go off on a depressing note. It's been absolutely lovely. I could highly recommend a visit to Corfu if you're at all interested in wildlife of any type. Beautiful island and I don't have shares in the tourist board or whatever. Anyway, my last day. Uh, time to head home to, to England in the morning. But, uh, Hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, don't forget to um, subscribe if you want to uh, uh, get more videos along these lines. All right, take care.